Today I'm going to be answering the top 5 old school maple story questions because as you can probably see on Twitch and YouTube there are so many more people playing old school maple story nowadays and you might be wondering what server are you playing on which is number 5 in our list. So I'm playing on Artel which is on Maple Story Worlds. If you're watching anyone play old school maple story on Twitch or YouTube these days it's most likely going to be on this server Artel. So Maple Story Worlds is something that you can access officially through Nexon. So it's not a private server, it's 100% legal. And Maple Story Worlds is basically Roblox for Maple Story. And so Korean developers created an old school server using Maple Story World assets. So it's actually kind of cool because this started in Korea, they ported over the server into global, and now we are able to play. And it feels just like old school Maple Story, but with some improvements. So here are some things that I like. Like about Artel on Maple Story Worlds. Number one, there's auto loot, so you don't have to press and control, press and spam Z all day. You can actually just walk over items and they auto loot for you. Also, there's an auction house, which is kind of controversial, but the auction house just makes the gameplay more fluid and it really eases the, t eases the time that you spend on selling your items. And number three, there's no genders in this server. So basically you can wear whatever items you want, which makes it really easy to just find gear that you need to wear. Number four, there's a big community. This community maybe has like, I don't know, there are 200 channels on average on Maple Story World's Artel, and each channel can hold up to 50 people, which a lot of people don't like, but I really don't mind. But there's a huge community out there. There's so many people on Twitch and YouTube making content for Maple Story World, so many streamers out there. It's really, really fun right now. And also, it's 2x progression speed, which is kind of a plus because old school Maple Story grind was really, really slow. So you're able to get this experience with it not being too overpowered, but still feeling like you can get through a lot of content in the game. And then the last point I want to make of things that I like is that it's legal. You don't have to play in a legal private server. You can just play from the comfort of your home without worrying about any legal repercussions because this is an official Nexon product, which is awesome. So that, let's talk about the things that I dislike about Artel on Maple Story Worlds. And honestly, no complaints so far. I mean, sure, there have been some complaints in the community, but for those of us who have been waiting for an old school experience, this is like freaking awesome. So I'm really glad this happened. But yeah, no complaints so far. So I totally recommend playing Artel. So if you're interested in playing Artel, check out the instructions in the description of this video. I'll have some information for you right there. But without further ado, let's get into the fourth question, which is what are the best classes to play? So in Old School Maple Story, it's pretty cut and dry because there are only five class branches and each branch has about two or three jobs that you can pick from. And the top three are Cleric, Spearman, and Assassin. So Cleric is really popular right now. It's probably the most popular class at the moment and probably will be forever because you can make a lot of money on this character because it has easy training. You can train at so many good maps that make you a lot of money. You can serve on mana potions as a Cleric, which is really, really awesome. You don't have to spend your meso on potions as much as other classes do. And of course, you give your party support. So when it comes to um, training in group settings, you have holy symbol, you can heal your party, give them attack buffs, all that sorts of stuff. And obviously when people start doing bossing, when that content gets released, there's going to be a big need for some clerics up in the house. So that's awesome. Then the other best class in the game is probably Spearmen because they're strong. Like from the get go, you're going to be a strong character. The training is really, really simple, and it's just easy to play. Once you get to third job especially, you're going to have great mobbing with that dragon roar skill. It's going to be very, very fun. And then the last one that I would suggest is Assassin. And Assassin is known for being a little bit more hard to fund in the old school Maple Story days just because you have to buy throwing stars and all that stuff, but you do have simple training as an Assassin. It's just one skill that you have to manage up until your third job, which a lot of people like, but a lot of people don't like because you don't get like true mobbing, but you do have great mobility. You have haste in your second job, you're going to get flash jump in your third job. And I also want to mention that for Assassins, you have a lot of quality of life in this server. Basically, you don't have to buy loads and loads of throwing stars. You just have to find one throwing star of your choice, you equip it, and then you don't have to worry about running out or recharging them ever. And they also get some great quality of life buffs, buffs such as you don't need to have a summoning rock for your shadow partner. And also, if you're right next to the mom and you, a mob and you attempt to throw a throwing star, it's not going to attack 
the mob, if you get what I'm saying. You can basically use your attacking skills from a close distance, which makes the training experience much, much easier. So those are the three classes that I would recommend for beginners. But again, play whatever your class you want. It's your maple story. So then number three in the list is where do I train from level 10 to 30? So I have kind of a weird training guide. I talked about that in my prior video, but generally this is what people are suggesting. Hennessy's hunting ground, you can party up there up until level 20 or 21. Hit Mushroom Hidden Street, basically also in Hennessy's if you know how to get to Mushmom. Going to that first map on the road to Mushmom, there's a bunch of mushrooms in that hidden street. The spawn is amazing, so even though mushrooms are really weak and give low EXP in comparison to like green mushrooms, the simple mob count in that map is going to be amazing. Then the third one I would recommend is Kerning Construction Site. You can go train at those lower level mobs, and then once you get higher up in the map, you can train at the Octopus, which are really, really good EXP, and you have a really safe spot that you can hunt from, which is going to make your training experience really, really easy. That's where I trained. And then from 20 to 25, I trained in Kerning Subway, the Bubblings. I think there are other methods of leveling up that people are suggesting, but I like bubblings because the mobs move fast so they can, you can have high kill rate. There is a lot of mob spawn in that map and also they drop some pretty valuable items. So if you're farming for like a scroll, if you want the fish spear, there are some great items that you can get from the bubblings to make some meso. And then 25 to 30, people are recommending wild boars in a party. This is a really good map for party play. And then wooden and rocky masks. I actually stayed, from like level 30 to 44, all the way wooden rocky masks because they drop really, really valuable scrolls. The mob count is really high and they give great EXP. So you can even stay there from like level 30 to 45 if you wanted to, but just know that once you get to like level 43, the EXP does start to drop off, but it's amazing there because they give so much EXP, so many good resources, and you're gonna make a lot of meso in these maps. So that's what I would generally recommend. And so that brings us to the next question that people have on their mind in regards to training. And number two in the list, are quests and party quests worth it? So this server does have PQs and quests implemented in the game, which is awesome. But sure, you can do the quests and party quests if you want, but I just wanna say that they're totally not mandatory. I got to level 44 without doing a single quest, without doing a single party quest, and I experienced the game just fine. So let's talk about the pros of doing quests. So in the early game, you can get potions, which are very, very essential. A lot of people need potions, especially in the old school days. You can get some decent equips and scrolls depending on what quests you're doing, and they do give some decent EXP. I don't think it's going to be as fast as just straight up mob grinding, but you do get some decent EXP. So if you want like that perfect blend of getting some equips, getting some potions, getting some EXP, definitely look into some quests. But the cons of a quest is that I personally just find them annoying. And also, if you're not if you're not experienced with these quests already from back in the day, you're gonna have to do a lot of research on what to do, where to get the items, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it can be very annoying for those players who are not as experienced with old school Maple Story. But let's talk about party quests now. Party quest pros. They're fun and social. You know, if you want to play with people, you want to get that old school experience, party quests are there. They give decent EXP so you can level up pretty quickly. And especially for Kerning PQ, which is kind of the only party quest we have right now, they give really good equips. Like you can get the bamboo hat, you can get slime shoes if you're really, really lucky, but totally a valuable option if you want to go that route. But the cons is that I think it's personally slower than grinding and it's hard to find a party because there are so many channels and also there is a limit to how many people can play on one channel in Artel, it's going to be hard to find a party. So I would recommend actually grinding and then once people start recruiting for a party in the all chat, you can go ahead and message them. But one of the reasons why party quests are slower than grinding is because it takes a lot of time to actually find a party, to actually find a channel to run in. And so that cuts into your grinding time. So you also have to take that into consideration. So let's get into the top question. Is Artel worth playing if Maple Lands is coming? So for those of you who know what Maple Lands is, basically this is the question that a lot of people are asking. But if you don't know what Maple Lands is, 
yes, we're gonna talk about that. But Maple Lands is a true old school experience that they have in Korean version of Maple Story World. So basically, it's 1x, 1x exp, so it's basically that really, really grindy server, and it feels like a true old school Maple Story experience. Whereas Artel feels a little bit easier, and so a lot of people are anticipating Maple Land to come to Maple Story World's global, but there's no confirmation that it's coming anytime soon. So if you have the itch to play, Artel is great right now. And a lot of people are saying like, oh, but like it's going to waste time if I spend so much time on Artel and then everyone starts to play Maple Lands. But there's no use in waiting. I think you should have your fun right now because if you want to play the game, then you should just play the game because it's all about the fun at the end of the day, right? You're so worried about the time sink, like, oh, is it a waste of time? But just ask yourself this question. If I play, am I going to have fun? And if the answer is yes, go ahead and play. And then if Maple Lands does come to Maple Story World's Global, then you can go ahead and try it out. And if people start migrating to Maple Lands and you want that fresh experience again, go ahead and play that. But if you don't want to play Maple Lands because you're so deep into Artel, keep playing Artel. Don't make yourself feel bad if you do waste some time playing Artel. Just go with the flow and do what feels right in the moment. And personally, I think Artel is great. I think Artel feels super, super nice in the moment. So I think you should just go ahead, try it out. If you like it, keep playing, etc., etc. And if you do keep playing, you're probably going to ask, how do I get potions? And I made a video about that, which you can click on on the screen because that's probably the top question that people are asking, like, how do I get potions? I'm so broke. So let me know what you think of that video. If you do go ahead and watch it, good luck in old school Maple Story.